But today I actually want to, today and, and even next week, I just want to look around this idea of who we are as a church. I actually want to look on this thing of there's more for you. It's who we are as a church, as a next level church. And, and so today I want to, there's more for you but moving from ordinary to extraordinary. So moving from ordinary to extraordinary. So who has ever had a, had a birthday and thought, that's it, that's as far as I'm going? Has anyone, I, I seem to have that every year. It's like, this year, it's like, I don't want to get any older. Um, and I think I've thought that for the past 10 years. Um, when my kids say, Dad, what would be an ideal age you could stop at? I, for some reason, I always say 27. 27, maybe 27 was a good year. Subconsciously, I just think 27. Maybe it was a year that I enjoyed the most. I'm not really sure, but, but for nearly every birthday that comes around, it's like, I don't really want to get another year older. Um, I don't like the thought of getting older. And I know that I have so much more that God wants me to do. And I think that's why I don't like getting older. So I, I have these dreams, I have these uh, plans, these desires in me that I believe are from God. And so it's like, the older I get, it seems like those things maybe are just starting to get further and, and further away. But I love what Psalm 20 verse 4 says, and this is what it says. It says, May He grant your heart's desires and make all your plans succeed. So may he grant your heart's desires and make all your plans succeed. And this is a verse that I pray into my life regularly. It's like, God, you've placed these dreams, you've placed these desires in, inside of me and say, and so I just pray, Lord, I pray that you will just bring these into fruition, that Lord, these things will happen. And so I think that's a, a big reason why I don't like getting older. I, I, I don't like things just sort of carrying on in, in us, or me personally, getting older. But here's what else I, I, I know is, is that as I get older, it's that the less I actually know. Has anyone ever had that realisation that the older you get, the less you know? It's like, I, I really don't know anything. But if you took me back to when I was 15, 16, uh, for you teenagers, you know, when you're 15, 16, in your early 20s, it's like, you think you know everything. Um, you know, and it's sort of until the first child comes along, it's like, I really had no idea. And it's sort of like my, my, my whole mind, my whole thinking really changed. But in that late teenagers, um, early 20s, it's like you just think you know everything. But the older you get, it's like the less you actually know. But as much of us, or most of us, and maybe it's just me, don't like the idea of getting older, here's what I've realised, is that there's actually nothing I can do about it. I can't do anything about my birthday. And I remember someone saying to me, like, you realise... And I was having a bit of a whinge to him saying, I really don't like getting older. Like, here's some, I want to tell you something. I'm like, yeah, you can't do anything about it. We can't actually do anything about our age, about how fast we are, maybe getting older. It just keeps on going. The seconds, they just keep on ticking. The minutes, they just keep on moving. The hours, they just keep on rolling by. The days just seem to flow into another, the weeks. And then before long, it's like, oh, we're already another two, three years down the track and it just felt like yesterday I was doing this or that. And we can't stop time moving. As much as we try, we just can't. We can't. And as we get more grey hairs, we can maybe try to colour them, you know, and think, no, you can live in denial and think, no, there's no grey hairs there. Or maybe you're losing your hair, uh, whichever one it may be, grey hair, losing it. And, and so we can try to cover it, but it doesn't actually hide or actually doesn't say, no, you're not a certain age or you haven't moved on in your life. Um, our age, the years of our life, they just continually grow up and up. So I just want you to think about our years, our age, it just sort of keeps on going up and up. Our age has and does continue to go to the next level, the next stage. But here's what I've realised, is that so many areas of our life don't follow suit. That our age just never stops going, but there are so many areas in our life which maybe just stay stagnant. They just stay dormant. And there are some areas in our lives that we haven't even looked at, or maybe haven't even given any attention to. There are areas of our life that haven't grown in years. In some areas of our life that may have not moved to the next level, may have not grown at all, are maybe it is our health and our fitness. I know for me this is something that I've 
really had to work on in the last little bit and I'm a bit more conscious of it now. It's um, maybe because I'm physically not working every day and I know when I was physically working, it was just like, I, I felt fit, I felt good. Um, I look back on old photos and it's like, I, I look really skinny. And I remember my dad saying is like, you know, don't just be careful what you eat because one day there'll come an age where it's just like, you know, it, it just sort of starts to come on out. And I'm like, no, nah, no, nah, it's all good, it'll be right. But, but as I'm, you know, and I'm not old by any means, and some of you are probably look at me and think I'm way young, others probably look at me and think I'm way old. But, um, but it's just like, a, as I am maturing, it's like I realise that I do got to be careful with what I eat and my exercise and even my health and fitness. And so they are, it's a big issue in our life as we do even grow older. That's something we maybe need to look at. Um, for those of you who are married, maybe it's your marriage where you haven't looked at in many years. It's just like you're just rolling on by. You know things maybe aren't right. Maybe it's a family issue. Maybe it's um, your immediate family with your um, kids, with your um, siblings. Maybe with your extended family that there are issues which you just haven't looked at. You've never really tried to reconcile maybe some past hurts or um, things that have gone on in the past. Maybe it's even just friendships. Friendships with people, maybe some of us just struggle having friends, making friends. Maybe we just don't have any close people around us that can challenge us, that can even uh, correct us, that can sharpen us in our faith journey. Maybe it's your finances. Maybe it is you're still struggling from week to week how you were 10 years ago, five years ago. Maybe it's your work or career where it's, and, and, and I want to be careful on this, it's not like we need to be striving, striving all the time in our work or career, but if it's a, you're 50 years old and you're still doing the jobs of a first year apprentice, well then there's probably something not quite right. But it's like we want to advance in certain areas of our life because we do know that there are, there's more for us. And every next level of your faith takes you from ordinary to extraordinary. But there's an area of our life which is so important. It's really the most important area of our life where we need to grow, where we need to go to the next level in, and that is our relationship with Jesus Christ. Our relationship with Jesus Christ should be number one. It should be where we're spending the most energy, the most time, the most thought. Every next level of your faith takes you from ordinary to extraordinary. And I actually think maybe every area of our life, when we go to the next level in any area of our life, it moves us from ordinary to extraordinary. All of us need to go to the next level. All of us should be wanting to go to the next level. All of us need to be striving to go to the next level in our lives, with, in our relationship with God. Whatever it is where you know you need to work on. You see, God, he wants us to. God just want, doesn't want us just to live this comfortable life where we're just sort of floating on by and it's like, oh, you know, my health and fitness, it's, oh, it, I'm okay, it's maybe not the best, but I, I'm getting by. It's my finances, yeah, they're all right. It's my relationships, my marriage, my family. It's, there's a few issues, but, you know, I don't really want to dive too deep in. That may just cause more heartache. Inside. And so we just sort of cruise on by, but God actually wants us to grow. God actually wants us to continually go to the next level in so many areas of our life. And I love what Deuteronomy 1 verse 11 says. It says this, and it says, And may the Lord, the God of your ancestors, multiply you a thousand times more and bless you as he promised. Here it's saying that God, he actually wants us to move forward. He wants us to be multiplying. He wants us, he actually wants to bless us, but he also wants us to do our part as well. You see, God has a next level for us. God wants us to go to the next level in all areas of our life. He wants all of us to be moving from ordinary to extraordinary. How many of us feel that we have every area of our life all together. Anyone want to put their hand up and say, you've just got every area of your life all together? Anyone? No. We, we, we just don't. All right, here's another question. How many of you think that you know everything that there is to know? 
with every, you know, with what I said before, does anyone here think you know just everything there is to know? No, I used to work with someone and, and um, they, they would probably say that, that they just know everything there is. It's like, you know, I'm too old to learn anything new and so what I know is what I know and that's all I need to know. But how many of you feel like you're as close to God as what you can get? They want to say that they're as close to, okay, yep, they're as close to God as what they can get. All right, so let's look at what Paul has to say to it in, in Philippians 3, verse 12 to 14. So here Paul, he's talking to the church in Philippi, and this is what he's saying. He says, I'm not saying that I have this all together, that I have it made. So here's Paul, someone who, he went from someone who was persecuting Christians, he was, you know, he was... At one time in a certain area, he was in charge of gathering Christians and either um, being oversight of maybe even them being killed or stoned or harassed in some way. And here he goes, he went from that to really being, I guess, the forefront for, I guess, the move of God and, and the church of Jesus Christ in, the, in this earlier part. And here he is saying, I'm not saying that I have this all together, that I have it made. Here's Paul, he says that I haven't got it all together. He's, here he is saying, he says, I know there's been times in certain areas of my life where it's like, I know I need to grow. So this is Paul saying. And here's what I think we can take out of this as well, is that there are so many areas of our lives where we don't have it together, where we don't have it made. And when we think about our relationship with Jesus Christ, I think we all can say is that, hey, I haven't actually got this thing sorted out. It's really, there's, I know there's more for me. I know there's that another level that I can go to. I know that I'm not at the top of where I can be or as close to God as I can, can be. There is more for me. And I know there's been at times in my life where maybe in certain areas of my life where subconsciously, it's, if you'd asked me, I would have said, yeah, yeah, no, nah, I know I've got it all together. You know, maybe it's just this bit of cockiness inside of me where I'm thinking I'm all, all okay. And again, this was when I was a, a lot younger. But it's like, you know, you, you think back and it's like, there were times where it's like, if you'd asked me about a certain subject or maybe a certain area of my life, I would have been like, yep, no, nah, I've got it all sorted, I'm all good. But here, and if we can learn anything from Paul, out of this one verse here, it says, hey, I'm not saying that I have this all together, that I have it all made. But here's where he goes on with it, and he says this, but I am well on my way, Reaching out for Christ, who has so wondrously reached out to me. Friends, don't get me wrong. By no means do I count myself an expert in all of this. But I've got my eye on the goal where God is beckoning us onward to Jesus. I'm off and running and I'm not turning back. So what he's saying is this, is, is that, hey, listen, listen guys. So listen to the church in Philippi, it's really even to us now. He's saying that, hey, I haven't reached the top yet. I, I haven't grown as far as I can grow. I don't know everything there is to know about God. I, I know that there's still more for me, that God has more for me to do. I still know that, hey, there's areas in my life where I still need to get right. There's areas of my life which aren't properly, you know, straightened out with God yet. I haven't reached the top of where I can be with Jesus Christ. He's saying there's more for me still. There's another next le level. I want to keep moving from ordinary to extraordinary. And for me personally, that's what I want for my life. I want to keep moving from ordinary to extraordinary. I want to keep going to the next level in my life. I want all of you to keep moving from ordinary to extraordinary. I want all of you to keep moving to the next level in every area of your life. And especially when it comes to your relationship with Jesus Christ, I want you to keep growing. I want you to keep taking that next step, to keep going to the next level. It's the most important area of our life where we need to just keep going, to keep moving forward, to keep saying that, hey, I haven't got this all worked out. I want to keep pressing forward to that next level with Jesus. I want to keep moving from ordinary to extraordinary. And we need to. All of us need to. We all should be wanting to. We all should have this desire inside of us to, to go to that next level because we realise that there's so much more for us. And I think that's what Paul is trying to say. There's, 
there's still more for me. I know God has more for me. And that's what I want to say to all of you, is that God has more for you than where you are right now. And when we live with that attitude that there's more for me, it shouldn't make us selfish. It doesn't make us selfish to the point of, there's more for me, I just want to get everything for me. But what it really we should be saying to ourselves, there's more for me and when I grow, when I get better, when I get closer to God, that's actually going to help me take others along in the journey with me in helping others. And that way I'll be better equipped to help others go to the next level in their life and their relationship with Jesus as well. I need to keep going to the next level so that I can help others around me go to the next level. Maybe that's a, a family member. Maybe that is a work colleague. Maybe it is a neighbour. Someone you go to the gym with or you play sport with. We need to keep moving forward. We need to keep going to the next level so that we can help others go to the next level in their relationship with Jesus Christ as well. Ephesians 3 verse 20 to 21, which is our verse as a church. And it says, God can do anything, you know. Far more than you could ever imagine or guess or request in your wildest dreams. Now, I love this verse. It's like, God can do infinitely more. So you can read in different versions. It's, God can do wondrously more. God can do infinitely more than what you could ever ask of him. More than what, more than what you could pray to God. More than what you could ask of him. More than what you can, even the plans, the desires you have in your mind and heart. Even your wildest dreams. You know, and, and for me, I have some pretty wild dreams. I have some pretty wild and out there requests of God where it says God can actually do more than that. And when you think about it in your life, God can do so much more in your life than what you could ever think, than more than what you could ever imagine, more than what you could ever dream up, more than what you could ever ask of God. In verse 21 of this, it says, He does it not by pushing us around, but by working within us, his spirit deeply and gently within us. And I think that's so important that God doesn't just push us around. He doesn't just boss us around. He doesn't just manipulate us around. But it's by his spirit working gently within us. And when we come with that attitude of surrendering to God, saying, God, I know there's more for me. God, I know there's that next level you want to go you want me to go to in my life and my relationship with you. And we come with that humble attitude. Well, and we allow God's spirit to work through us when maybe there's certain things in your life where you know you need God to come and, and work in. Maybe there's things you need to let go of. Maybe there's things you maybe actually need to give to God. He does it not by pushing us around, but by his spirit deeply and gently working within us. Our age is the only thing that just keeps growing without us doing anything. And maybe if you sit down and you just eat food and, you know, maybe your body might just keep growing a little bit as well if we don't do anything about it as well. But our age, if you just think about our age, it's the only thing that keeps going without us doing anything. Yet in every other area of our life, we have to be intentional about it. We have to be intentional if we want to keep going to that next level. We have to be intentional if we want to keep moving from ordinary to extraordinary. You know, may we be people that don't just allow our age to be the only area of our life that grows. May we be people that continually go to the next level in every area of our life. May we be people that continually go to the next level in our relationship with Christ. May we be people that continually move from ordinary to extraordinary. May we be people that are intentional in the way that we live our lives. In the way that we live our lives for Christ in the way that we strive to want to know him more, in the way that we are intentional about how we actually want to get better, we actually want to grow closer to him because that's actually going to help us help others go to the next level. Let's be people that move from ordinary to extraordinary. 
Let's just close our eyes. And let's just pray. Dear Lord, I thank you that you have so, so much more in store for every single person, Father. And just as we pray today, I just want you to really just make this personal where you just say, God, I know that there is more for me. And I want you just to, just even right now, I want you just to take a few moments. And I want you to say, God, I know there's more for me. I know there's that next level that I need to go to in my life, in my relationship with you. Lord, I pray that we will just be people that keep moving from ordinary to extraordinary. Lord, we won't, where we won't be satisfied with where we are in our life and our relationship with you. But Lord, that we will realise that there is so much more. Lord, that you have so much more for us. And just like in the words of Paul, where it's like, hey, I, I haven't reached that top point yet. I haven't reached that pinnacle. Of, I haven't reached uh, or in far as knowing as much as I can know about you, God. And Lord, I pray for all of us that that will be our prayer, Lord. Lord, there is still so much more for me. Lord, I, I don't know everything there is to know about you. I want to know you even more. I want to know you closer. I want to know you in a more real and intimate way, Father. Lord, may that just be our prayer. And maybe with every eye closed and head bowed here at the moment, and maybe this is, I've just been speaking today, and maybe for you it's like, you know there are areas in your life where you need to get right with God. Maybe for some of you it's like, you know what, I know there's more for me. There's more for me. I know actually that I'm not right with God. And if that's you, I'd just love for you just to raise your hand and say, you know what, yeah, that's me. I need to, I need to just get right with him. I need to fix things right with him. Maybe for others of you, it's like, you know that there is still so much more that God has for you. Yeah, maybe you are just living this plateaued life where you just feel comfortable. Where it's like you're just happy just to cruise along and you know that God has so much more for you. You know there's still another level. You just, you just are maybe afraid just to push out. You're maybe just afraid to take that next step. If that's you, I'd love for you just to raise your hand as well. I just see your hands, yep. You can just put them down, yep. Yep. And then... When we put our hand up, it's just us acknowledging the fact that, hey, I know that there's more for me. I know God is still calling me higher. He's calling me beyond where I am now. Lord God, I pray for all those people, Father, that have raised their hands. Lord God, in acknowledging the fact that, Lord, you are still calling them forward. Father God, that you are drawing them to more. That you are drawing them into that next level. Lord God, you are drawing them closer to you. And Father God, I just pray for more now, Lord God, whatever hurdles maybe in front of them, whatever barriers, maybe just stopping that, Lord. Maybe there is some fear. Lord God, maybe there is even a, just that bit of worry, Lord God. Maybe there is just that bit of concern. Or maybe it's just a, even a, I'm just not really sure quite what I'm meant to do. Lord, I pray for all those people right now, Lord God, that you'll just reveal yourself to them, that you'll just show them that next step they're meant to take. Maybe it's that step of faith, Father God, where they are moving from where they are now into that new season, Father God. They're moving from ordinary, Father God, into extraordinary. And Lord, I just pray that over them, Lord, right now. Lord, I just pray for all of us, just as we go about this week, Father God. I pray that you will just give us all opportunities, Lord God, just to show your love, to show your grace, your mercy, Lord God, to all those people around us, Father God. And Lord, I pray that you will just help us all just to keep moving forward in you, to keep going to that next level. Lord God, and Lord, I pray that you'll just help us just to be intentional about moving from ordinary to extraordinary. And Lord, I just thank you and praise you for that in your mighty, mighty name. Amen. Amen.